Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of A Gardener's Journey Homestead. I am Barbara. I'm so glad that you're here. Today is an exciting day because today I'm going to start my fall and winter seeds. So amazing. So exciting. So yes, it is August, um, but this is the time now to start preparing for fall and winter. And I did a video maybe two or three weeks ago talking about um, why you want to grow a fall garden and I gave you my reasons about why I grow a fall garden and I encourage you to grow a fall garden as well um, and so today we're going to actually put um, it in practice and start our seeds now um, most people in my zone probably have started in July um, but because I was traveling and just other things going on I knew that I wouldn't start mine until August and then also from a location space issue I needed to kind of um, what do you what do you call it delay mine um a bit to make sure that i'm going to have places to put these um fall seedlings so today we're going to dive into what i'm planting or what i'm starting um why i'm starting it um and then kind of what my plan is now the thing that i haven't done which really should come before this step is my fall crop plan so i do a crop plan each season that kind of outlines where things are going to go in my spaces so I have um, five raised beds behind my house. I have a high tunnel with raised beds and in-ground spaces. And then I also have an in-ground garden. And so it's really important that you lay out your space. One, so that you start enough seeds or buy enough plant starts if you're going to buy them. Um, and then also know where things are going to go so that you don't, you know, start too many and don't have a place for them or don't start enough and your beds are empty, right? So I have not done that. So again, do as I say, not as I'm doing right now. But because I know I need time to kind of think about it, like I have like my stuff written down. I have the spaces kind of like mapped out, but I haven't like put the, the, the herbs and vegetables in the spaces on paper, right? And I really need to do that first. But if I wait until I have time to actually do the crop plan, it may be another week or so. And I don't want to delay that long starting my seeds. I want to go ahead and get them going so that they're ready for when I need them. So, again, sometimes things are not perfect. You can't do it in the order that you want to do it in. But you have to figure out what's the highest priority um, and then just kind of go from there. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, if you're new here, I'm in zone 7A. I'm in Tennessee. The other update I have is that y'all... I have air conditioning. Yes, yes, yes. If you've been following along on my YouTube channel, you know that we have had major storms in our area. And one of the storms three weeks ago literally burned up the inside of our um, air conditioning unit. Now, my house is only like four years old. Uh, we had it built. So it's a fairly new unit. But that storm came through. The lightning struck it and it tore it up. So Lee, we literally were without air for three weeks. But praise the Lord. They put it in yesterday, and I'm so happy. So that means that I can actually do stuff in my kitchen um, on video. So definitely stay tuned because I'm going to be showing you some stuff in the kitchen that I'm doing in terms of preserving, how I'm putting up stuff, all the stuff that you haven't been able to see because it's been so hot. I've done some of it, and some of it I haven't done. Some of it I had to do just so that it wouldn't go to waste, but it was like, hey, chop, chop, chop. Let's get it in the freezer really, really quickly um and doing it in stages so it wasn't really best for video but i have air i have power and today we are starting our seed so i'm so 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 excited so i want to know in the comments i know that when i did the last video i asked if you were doing a fall or winter garden um and many of you said yes so i'm very excited because i remember last year when i asked that question Maybe I had a different audience. I don't know. But I didn't see that a lot of people were doing it. And I really encourage you to do a fall um, garden. I really encourage. It is one of, to me, one of the easiest times to grow because you have less pest pressure. It's not as hot. And it's just much more pleasant, right? Um, and so some of you may be like, look, the summer girl has taken me out. Like when this last tomato gets on the vine, I am done. If so, I get it. I completely understand. But for those of you who want to jump on in the deep end with me, let's do it so the first thing is we have our clean cups um and i'm going to be starting my seeds in these two and a half inch pots you can see i've shown these many times before but if you're new here um i got all my cups cleaned out from the spring and summer plantings you want to do that each season so that you're not transferring bacteria or that it's just not grimy and stuff like that. I like to just start clean and fresh each season. So these are all new cups. 
um, that have been washed, clean, sanitized. Um, and these are from Bootstrap Farmer. It is my number one place to buy my pots, trays, and things like that. The only exception are these right here. These six, six inch, excuse me, these six cell starting things. I love these. I got these from Epic Gardening. But everything else that I use, trays, pots, and all that are from Bootstrap Farmer. Number, number one place. And no, I don't get a commission or any money from them. But I just love the product that much. So I'm starting these in two and a half inch pots. And the reason why I'm doing that, the reason why I'm doing it this way and not this way, because I love this, is because I don't want to have to up pot, right? I want to be able to take the seedling from here to the ground. And so in order for me to do that, and I know that I'm going to have a time period before I do that, I don't want to have to put them in here and then have to up pot them. So for example, here are some seedlings. This is basil that I started, I don't know, maybe three or four weeks ago. Um, I'm going to take this and actually plant it. We'll probably, maybe we can find a place to plant this today, right? That's some basil, um, one that's just left over that germinated, right? So we'll take that and put it in the ground. But let's say I wasn't ready. Oh, it smells so good. It smells so good. But let's just say I wasn't ready to put my basil in the ground or I didn't have a spot for it. In order for this to continue to grow really well, it needs more space. And so I would have to up pot it into this. Well, I already know that I'm not going to put these out immediately. So that's why I'm going to start in these. So let's... um. So let's just get these um, in our tray. I don't keep all my colors like the same colors, like all yellow together. Why? I mean, in an ideal world, I would, but I don't live in an ideal world with my schedule and time. So they just all mismatched. But <laughs> my, I mean, I'm not anal anal, but cause if so, then I would do it. But there's a piece of me that wish they were all, you know, like color-coded. Meaning, you know, all my brown together and all that. But I'm not going to take the time. Uh-oh, sorry, guys. I'm not going to take the time. Ooh, my hat. My, my, my. Ooh, y'all, my hat. Can't, can't be losing my hat. Uh, I'm not going to take the time to do that. When I can, I try to put light colors together. But, you know. So like, you know, putting all the greens there, that kind of thing. But the plants are not going to know the difference. So we're going to put all of these in here. This is a 32 cell um, thing. Okay, so we got these left over. So now we're just going to fill it up with soil. And I'm probably going to do several trays of these. So let me go ahead and get the soil in here. And then uh, we'll pre moisten our soil, and I'll come back and tell you what we're going to plant. Okay, y'all. I um, let's go ahead and water our soil. We got all of our pots. I'm just lightly watering because the soil is already moist. And it's going to help with germination and not the seeds moving around. Do you have to water ahead of time? Nope, you don't. I just like to because it helps that if it's already um, moist, when I put the seeds in there, and then um, go back over it with water, then it's not gonna move the seed because I can just mist it. So that's just something that I do. I just try to get it wet and I have two trays. <clears throat> so let me kind of tell you what we're doing. So I have two trays. This is obviously not gonna be all of my fall seeds. So today is really just a start. We will be doing successions of planting just like we did in the summer. Um, and I'll be starting some more seeds next week um, because the seeds that I'm not starting today are collards. One, because I left them in my house somewhere. They're not in my box of fall seeds. I don't know. So they have to be on the table. I must have left them or something. And then my spinach. 
my spinach, I'm gonna try something new that I haven't done. I actually put my spinach seeds in the freezer and I'm gonna use a stratification process, meaning let them be in the freezer, let them be cold, and then um, start the seeds to break through um, the dormancy. I did that earlier this summer or this spring when I started my lavender and it worked like a champ. And spinach is hard to germinate. And it just takes a long time. Like for me, it usually takes two weeks for my spinach to germinate. And so I've heard that with lettuce and spinach, and I mean, some people just keep their seeds in the freezer. I don't. One, I just don't. <laughs> Two, I mean, I guess I could make space, but yeah, I don't. Um, a lot of people do. So um, if you already do that, then so be it. But if you don't do that, there are special um, seeds that can benefit from being in the freezer and then when you start them um it's called stratification when they go from the cold to the regular room temperature it the seed is almost pretending as if it's um i don't know winter or something and it breaks out of dormancy if that makes sense i'm not explaining it the best way but just look up cold stratification and you will see what i'm talking about i did it with my lavender i did a side-by-side -side test i did some lavender seeds that i cold stratified and i did lavender seeds that i did not cold stratify the lavender seeds i cold stratified germinated much quicker almost by a week than the ones that i did not cold stratify so with my spinach it has customarily taken two weeks like i'm like man this this thing is not going to germinate and i go to start more and then they finally pop up so we're going to do a test. So I'm not doing that today because I just remembered I put my spinach seeds in the freezer. So I'll probably start my spinach spinach seeds next week. I'll do my collards next week. Um, and let me show you what I have so far. So I'm doing, um, I have three rows of lettuce and a row, a row is four based on this tray. There's eight rows of four. So I'm doing three rows of lettuce and I'll be doing lettuce all throughout the season like I've been doing like every couple of weeks. We kind of got off our schedule just with all the travel and stuff. So um, lettuce is a cool weather crop. So it thrives in the cool. I've been growing lettuce all summer long. and It's done great. Um, so I'm proud about that. But we're doing lettuce. I have three rows of cabbage. I have two rows of bok choy. I have four rows of kale. Um, and y'all, we... Um, the kale I use a lot. I cook it. I steam it. I put it in smoothies. Um, and I really need to go through my freezer and start using up some of this stuff. Because I still have kale from last um, season. But the thing about it is, is that, you know, I'll have my first, let's say my first harvest of kale, maybe October or so. But I will have kale all the way up until May because I have a high tunnel, right? It extends the season. So a lot of people talk about fall gardening. Obviously, this is my fall and winter because I have a high tunnel. Now, if I didn't have a high tunnel and was growing outside, could I still grow some of these things? Yes, it would have to be under some kind of protection at some point in the season when it gets really, really, the temperatures get low. Um, I would say in Tennessee and 7A, we have more of a mild winter. Some of you, of course, in northern climates, your winters are much more brutal than us. I mean, we get snow, I don't know, maybe a couple of times a season. And when I say snow, we're talking, I don't know, an inch or two, three inches. I mean, three inches, it's like, oh man, we got a lot of snow. So very, very mild winter. So keep that in mind as I'm talking about what I'm planting and what I can do versus what you're planting and what you can do. Okay. Um, what else? So I have four rows of kale. Um, I'm trying two new varieties of kale. One is called winter boar, which is a hybrid. I've never grown a hybrid kale, but I saw it at that camp that farm um seminar that i went to it was beautiful it looks just like um curly blue dwarf scotch kale it looks identical like that but i just wanted to try to see i mean i've never had any issues with kale like my kale germinates it lasts all season it doesn't get any any disease so i have not had any issues with kale i, I drunk some water that's what that is and the condensation of the water got on my shirt um but i just wanted to try it because i saw it and it looked nice so i have the winter board kale and then another new variety that I'm trying is called Calibration, which is a kale mix. So it had like red and um, green kale mixed together, almost like a spring mix, but kale. So both of those are from Johnny's. Um, and then I have two rows of broccoli and then one row of cilantro. So the only things that I did not do is cauliflower. Um, 
cauliflower takes a long time and I've ordered I also have ordered some more fall seeds that are not here yet and I ordered a cauliflower variety I think it's from high mowing that has a lower um, a, a lower shorter maturity date so I wanted to try that because the varieties I have like take a hundred and 120 days and I'm just still debating on do I want to invest in space for my cauliflower in my beds and because I haven't done my crop plan I don't know um, but the things in the fall that um, y'all know I love collards so we always dedicate um, two rows to collards cabbage and broccoli collards cabbage broccoli are probably the top three fall vegetables that we love now the other things that are missing are things that I will direct so like carrots we will direct so beets we will direct so um what else I think that's it I think that's it so anyway this is the start of the fall we'll be talking about fall much more so everything is moistened everything is labeled you guys can see I got my plant tags in there so now it's nothing to it but to do it so let's get it done so we have our lettuce I got all my seeds like staged here I pulled out the ones that I'm doing so for lettuces I am doing a romaine because you can never ever go wrong with romaine I'm doing a green butter and everything that I'm doing in the lettuce family today is a pelleted seed if you haven't heard me talk about pelleted seeds before let me show you what they look like do you see that I'm in love and obsessed with pelleted seeds so the pelleted seeds is just covered in an inorganic um matter so it's like it's not chemicals or anything like that but the pelleted seed makes it easier for you to see an individual seed versus you know that lettuce seeds are really really tiny and usually when you do lettuce you have to broadcast so if you're direct sowing which means you kind of just broadcast it you know just kind of throw it out because the seeds are so tiny that it's hard for you to get an individual lettuce seed it's hard to get an individual carrot seed so the pelleted seeds make it much easier um, you're not wasting as many seeds or not using as many seeds. And y'all, since I have been using the pelleted seeds, like this is from Johnny's. Y'all know I heart Johnny's. I started off as a Baker Creek girl. I am Johnny's. I still order some stuff from, from Baker's Creek, but Johnny's is like my go-to. That's like my number one. Okay. Um, 98% germination. And I can attest to it. Like all the lettuce that I have done since the spring up until now has been a hundred percent germination. You can't beat that. So the pelleted seeds are a little bit more expensive, but what a hundred percent germination? Who is complaining? Okay. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, okay. So I also have green butter. We're going to do some of those. Okay. And I'm getting low on these. So I need to um, probably order some more. And then I'm doing a Cherokee and a Magenta. And then I'm doing Muir, M-U-I-R. So that's what I'm doing for lettuce. So I'm going to time lapse this um, and get all my seeds in and then we'll come back. <music> y'all we're done so now we're just gonna water it in and so when I go back I put it on mist instead of shower so that it way is not so heavy and but because I've already pre moistened the soil um, I can use the mist and feel confident that it's actually wet and the mist doesn't um move the seeds all around or push them down further which you don't want that so the temperature is mild this week it's like 85 so it's not too hot obviously it'll be warmer in the um tunnel um I'm going to eventually bring these in my house, but I think I'm going to let them stay out here to germinate um, and see how it goes. I can't remember what I did last year. Do y'all remember? 
I'm sure I would have started them out here. Um, I think I kept them out here. But I know that once they germinate and get, you know, to, you know, a little bit uh, of a height, I'm going to take them in my house just to protect them from the insects and stuff like that. So one of the issues that I have with cabbage and broccoli is that the insects get it because, of course, it's still summertime, right? And the heat and the insects. Now, in the fall, they do a little bit better except those cabbage mothworms or whatever. They just mess up, mess up my stuff. So I'm going to probably put them in my house after they germinate just because I can keep them a little bit more protected until I'm ready to put them out. Now, the dilemma is, is where am I going to put these? Because I have a thriving summer garden right now. And so that's what I got to think about when I go to do my crop plan is what beds are going to be empty first. Um, what things will I may have to rip out even while it's doing good. And that's always the delicate balance when you're switching and transitioning seasons that sometimes you have to rip out a crop that may be doing well that you know is only going to do well for another one or two weeks because that season is over. Uh, you may have to rip it out prematurely to go ahead and put something else in that you know is going to be for that season at a longer for a longer period of time. So that's one reason why I, I'm de I delayed mine to start my seeds now and not three weeks ago um, to give me time to get more harvest out of my summer garden, find a place to put it and all of that. So I do have, let's see, I have one empty raised bed in my tunnel already that I was thinking about doing green beans in. Um, ideally, I would have already put those green beans in last week before I went out of town. I did not. Um, so yeah, I don't know. So I have that. I do have raised beds behind my house, but this year I'm thinking about just doing my fall and winter stuff in my tunnel and not behind my house. The reason is, is because last year behind my house, I pretty much lost everything because of that. You know, it got really, really cold here. It got down to like zero and it was sustained. We had really low temperatures, like six, seven degrees, which is very abnormal for us. It was sustained for like days on end. And I lost a lot of my stuff um, out there. And then just having to cover it and put the hoops and stuff over it, like it was a lot, especially when you look at the forecast. And you're like, oh, it's going to be that low tonight. You're having to run out there. Of course, it's getting darker sooner. It was just, yeah. And I'm like, why, why am I doing that? I don't know that I want to do that. I may just reserve those beds for garlic. And um, I may do some flowers. I'm still thinking about it. Um, in my in-ground space, remember last year I tried doing some fall, winter stuff out there. That didn't go well. I did not harvest one thing. And so I said, I'm not doing that <laughs> anymore. It was a lot of work to put the stuff in the ground. Then, of course, it has to be covered. But it got, you know, it got eaten up by insects and all that. Like, so me just using my ton tunnel certainly limits my space, right? So when I do the crop plan, I'm going to see if it's feasible and see what we can come up with. Stay tuned. But y'all, as you can see, I don't know if you can tell, it's bright in here, but the sun is actually about to go down in about 10 or 15 minutes. So I think this is it. This is all I got done today. Some days it's like that. Um, it's been a pretty busy day, so I didn't get out here as early as I would have wanted to. But I can check off that I at least started my fall seeds. And look at these bell peppers. They're looking so good. I got to get them in the ground. Got to get them in the ground. Look at that. Beautiful. Um, so much to do. Very little time. But that is the story of a gardener. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. As we started our fall seasons, we just kind of, you know, put our toe in the water. We're not nearly done. We have much more to do, but at least we started. We can check it off the list. If you like what you're seeing on my channel, I would love for you to subscribe and be a part of this community. Um, I think it's a great community. You guys are great. Um, I appreciate you spending your time with me. I don't take it for granted. Remember, this is all a journey. I'm sharing my journey with you as you share your journey with me. It's all a journey. Let's grow together. I'll see you next time, friend.